Hello and welcome to the Wad Fam Chalk Pod. I'm Dylan Weaver, and I'm still here. And indeed, he is. Um, we we're we're here talking about Love Is in the Air Part Two. Um, yeah, uh, it's 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 episode three thirty six. It's written and directed by Paul McCusker. It aired November fourth of nineteen ninety five. And it's today's episode. It will be dearly missed. <laughs> Can we pause for a moment of silence for this episode? It will be dearly missed? I don't know, just the way that you delivered that. It sounded oh, like you were giving a good. eulogy. <laughs> <laughs> dearly beloved, we gather here... Oh, wait, nope, that's a wedding. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, it's more on uh, more on topic for the theme of this episode. Oh, wow, wow. I love being in the air and all. Yeah. Did you like? Do you like when they made that literal at the end of the episode? Oh God! Did did, did you like that, Andrew? I beat my did head you against like, the computer. <laughs> did you like when Tasha and Katrina's flights take off and, it, and Jason looks at the camera and says, "Eugene, I guess love really, really is, is in, in the, the air." air. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, that was <laughs> brutal. I mean, <laughs> if <laughs> if cartoon <laughs> physics applied to reality, mm. there would have been smoke coming out of my ears. <laughs> it it was uh, it, that hurt, and I love a good dad joke. Like, I know, I do too. It, but I was just literally in my so I didn't catch it on first listen. Oh no, and I, I was did. in my car, and on second listen, I just like to no one else in the car just went. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I just out loud was just like oh my word paul yeah like, yeah no i mean <laughs> you don't have to swing at all the meatballs you oh, know my, yeah it's it's so you could have just let that one slide it's wild and it's also it's so funny the the wild behind the scenes for this episode is that the show was supposed to the episode was supposed to end with tasha getting kidnapped oh and then they sat down and they went wait we just did <laughs> darkness before dawn <laughs> yeah. two episodes ago we probably should take a break <laughs> let's just cool it with the espionage right quick but i mean that's i feel like and that's later what they wind up doing with connie and mitch oh no yeah where it's yeah with <laughs> with freaking like here today uh, gone tomorrow or, yeah yeah it's, it's that one right that, yeah 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 where bennett charles just like breaks out yeah but it's classic but yeah so they luckily uh walked back from from that idea but but yeah I mean, I don't know that it would have been a bad idea. I think this episode ends in a really lovely way. It, it does. It does. And actually, I, as much as we've ribbed on it right off the top, I have a lot of affection for some of the conversations that happen in here. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a weird episode. It's not without problems, but it's also, uh, yeah, got a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, where does this? Oh, wait, no, it has its own promo. It does, in fact, have a promo. So let's roll that, and that'll that'll let us set up what's happening. With Adventures in Odyssey, Teeth Chatter, Bring Knuckles What, and Worry Lines Forming, it's the next. <laughs> I'm going to reload the page, and we'll see if that changes anything. <laughs> I really hope it doesn't. I really hope it doesn't. Because whatever genetic mutation that that is. All right. Oh, my God. Here we go. Try to. With Adventures in Odyssey. Teeth chatter. Bring knuckles what? And worry lines for me. It's the neck. <laughs> wow. It's the Nick. All right. Um, reaching out to uh, whoever provided promos to the wiki. I'm thinking it was Hubler, but we don't know for sure. Um, <laughs> this one's broken. <laughs> I just love teeth chatter. <laughs> yeah. Something about knuckles. <laughs> And, and oh it's too Lord. very dramatic. Like, it starts off with very bright toned, like, uh -huh. theme music, and then cuts uh -huh. to very somber music. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. No, that is. Uh... 
That's absolutely absurd. I, I, are you going to put that in the episode? I, I think I have to. Yeah, please do. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I've been given a choice in that matter, Andrew. Oh, okay, all right. I mean, you know, let the Lord guide you in their decision uh-huh. making. No, 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 no. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I, I gotta. It's... It's it's a really Dylan step away from the Neil Cicero. No, 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 no. Here's the thing: is I was gonna say it's really it's got really strong uh, the Outsiders vibes from from the uh, from Mouth Dreams. It's a brilliant album, best comedy album of the year 2020. Uh, also, yeah, almost made my best album of 2020, but it did get beat out. But like, as far as like things that made me laugh and cry. The premiere of Mouth Dreams, which Neil did on, um, played live on Twitch. Mm -hmm. And I just sat there in my room alone in fall of 2020 and, like, cried from laughter. Aww. Truly one of, yeah. That's special. That's so awesome. Best experiences. But, Mm. anyway. Lovely. So that was a wild promo. Yeah, um, I, so nutty. Uh, uh-huh. And, we and were not hoping... for the reasons that we usually say a promo was wild. No. This one was wild for an entirely different reason, and that reason was a corrupt file. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my stars. Um, yeah, so this episode obviously uh, like picks up right after where the previous one left off. Tasha's yep. in town. Love is in the air. Things are happening. Oh, and uh, Eugene blurted out that Connie likes Jason. That's yep. the that's the big old piece of tea from last episode that is still being unpacked um, in part two. Yeah, and so we we start it out with Eugene and Connie like at each other's throats mm-hmm. um, about nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're just they're like upset about petty differences and then eugene kind of like brings up the fact that like oh like you couldn't like you're still mad about yesterday or whatever and uh connie doesn't really address it and kind of storms off yeah yep that's 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 the thing and and we get jack kind of jumps in and is like why are you guys arguing Mm -hmm. you know yeah and he says he says at one point he's like you you two are supposed to be adults Mm -hmm. which is really questionable for connie at this point yeah um given that right we are still 70 episodes before her graduating (laughs) high school by the way yep high school yeah oh man i andrew what if we did so are you from are you familiar with the premise of the episode in which connie graduates uh she's the valedictorian of her class isn't she and so she has to give a speech so there's yes which is right which is a fun moment because we have the eugene being like i'm the only one who's not th- are you telling me that i'm yeah. the only one who's in this room who was not valedictorian of their graduating yeah, class yeah, yeah iconic line but the actual premise of that episode is that connie's wants to like talk about prayer at her final like oh, at her speech oh no and, like yeah it's a culture war episode written and directed by phil lawler fantastic um, of course so so it's episode four or five it's called the graduate yes what if we just cover the movie instead <laughs> what if we do that for like april fools next year that'd be fantastic i love the like, movie and i'd be happy to and dylan hasn't seen it i haven't yet. seen it uh, actually, we can't do that, Dylan. You need to watch that movie long before next April. <laughs> oh, come on, Andrew. But it would be such a fun bit. It would be a great bit. And honestly, you know what? This may be a great time for me to learn some of that delayed gratification you've been talking about. <laughs> I can just really... It's always... You know what, Andrew? It's invest in the bit for 11 months. <laughs> well, so here's the thing, Andrew, is it is... It's never the right time to learn about gra- delayed gratification. You should always be waiting to learn about it. <laughs> <laughs> and anticipation of uh-huh. learning. Uh-huh. Oh. Um, but also, next year, oh no, shoot, next year April 1st is on a Monday, so it's going to be two years. Think we can keep doing this podcast two years to commit to the bit? Uh, I mean, we might need to like do a wet or dry situation where we <laughs> talk about something completely different, but I think we can do it. Okay, all right. <laughs> Um, Shout out to Wet or Dry, a great podcast. Yeah, 
anyways, we'll see if any of that makes it in. <laughs> um, but uh, look, you won't remember in two years. No, certainly not. I probably won't remember in two weeks. Yeah, um, I was talking to the listener, not to the Andrew. <laughs> but anyways, uh, something about Jack, right? That's something that's about where Jack we were. Comes in, uh, um, yeah, and he's he, right. He says the thing about you know you're supposed to be adults, and mm-hmm. then um, they kind of disperse. Connie goes to the kitchen. Eugene's about to go upstairs, and Jack's like, "Wait, I got to talk to you, Eugene. Mm-hmm. What is going on with Connie? Yeah. There's like." Oh, because Connie and Jack have, like, that thing beforehand, before Eugene shows up, where Connie's like, ah, you, like, she just starts, she does, like, the, I don't know, she starts to just, like, complain about Eugene before he's there. Mm-hmm. And Jack's just kind of like, but then Jack's conversation here is to, like, try and, like, like, I don't understand Jack in this scene. His mm-hmm. whole thing is, like, that he's removed from the j- drama. But in this moment, he's like, Eugene, you gotta fill me in on yeah. what the deal is. Inserting himself into the drama, pretty much. Yeah, in a way that's weird. Um, and so they're being very hush-hush. That's a very hush, hush. thing <laughs> to do, though. <laughs> <laughs> but they're being all hush-hush because Connie's in the other room. And then Jason walks in and talks about how beautiful a day it is. And they're like, it's raining. And he's like, ah, but, you know, it's still the best. I've got exciting news, you know, about me and Tasha. And they're like, oh, you should probably be quiet. And he's like, nope, I'm going to tell you guys right now. I want you to be the first to know. And they're like, yeah, we don't want to say too loud, but Connie's in the other room. And he's like, why would that matter? But anyways, he reveals that uh, he and Tasha are engaged. Pans drop. (laughs) Pans drop, Connie walks out yeah. and like is like, I'm sorry, I just dropped some pans. I've gotta go I'll clean them up after I go do something else. It's yeah. a great line delivery by Katie Lee. Yeah. The like it sounds it all sounds very good. Mm-hmm. Once again, just like the sense of place and Connie being in another room yeah. is like brilliantly handled. So clean and like as somebody that's worked like in restaurants, you can hear stuff that's happening on the floor and like you're not always aware of that. Yeah, no, that just, I could completely imagine that happening in my head, and it was great. Yeah. Yep. Um, And, yeah, there's this whole thing, then, between Jack and Jason, because then Eugene also walks off. Yeah. And then Jack and Jason are talking, and Jack's like, you need to go talk to Connie. Mm -hmm. No, (laughs) Because Jack calls Eugene a coward for walking away after <laughs> that, which is so funny. And it's like, it's actually coming off Darkness Before Dawn, in which Jack was called a coward by Jason. Oh. I mean, I don't think that's on purpose. It's just funny. Yeah, yeah, no. He calls Eugene a coward because Eugene runs away as soon as uh, Connie finds out that Jason's <laughs> that yep. Jason's engaged. Yep. And uh, yeah, you're right. Then, then Jack talks to. Jason tells him to go tell Connie Yep. and talk about it. And um, Connie is currently wiping off dirt uh, on swings and the swing set and the slide in the rain. Yep. Rainwater mm-hmm. being I think cleanest. our first knowledge that there is a swing set and slide outside at Wits End or is it McAllister Park? I think and it's, it's Wits End. I feel like, why would she be cleaning park equipment? I don't know, Andrew. <laughs> why is she doing it in the rain anyways? That's fair. I shouldn't be looking why for logic Why does Whitsend have a, have a playground equipment? Uh, I mean, it's, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it's maybe, maybe it's just a time and era thing, but like businesses, especially catered towards kids or like that have a primarily like younger client base oftentimes have like. I don't know, stuff out front. Sure, like yeah. a playground or... It's just weird that it's not, like, something I've ever heard of before. No, yeah, it is weird. And also, I, I feel like maybe it was mentioned. I want to say, like, the episode where uh, they're trying to figure out who broke the window with the with the bat or whatever. Yeah, with, yeah. With Mitch and all yeah, that. Yeah, man, we like should it. do that one sometime. <laughs> we already covered it. No, we didn't. Oh, no! Because it's not really part of... It's like the one Mitch episode that's not a Novacom episode, and so we skipped it. I thought we were Because it was cover. early days. Yeah. But now, I mean, it would just be fun to do a one-off Mitch. All right. Yeah, next to Andrew's choice or Dylan's choice. Yep. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors you for it. It's a great legal episode. Yeah. Mm. You know what? No, I'm going to force you to burn an Andrew's choice on that one <laughs> after, after you put me through. That's fair. That being said, I think I am next up for a choice episode. You are next up. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
this podcast is famously pro-choice. <laughs> <laughs> so only for us the men <laughs> <laughs> yep we support dylan's choice and andrew's choice and that's it we've never we've done guest choice have we done oh, we haven't done like a true guest choice i guess we've like picked episodes for a guest we haven't had like a guest pitch yeah a guest pitch this is the episode i'd like to be on Except for the search for wit, which we haven't covered yet. Correct. Correct. <laughs> That's true. But we're not covering it because that person pitched it. No, no, we are covering it because it's the Holy Grail, and we're building yep. up to the battle royale I mean, to see who can cover it. The Holy Grail is quite the apt metaphor. <laughs> Thank you. Uh huh. So yeah. So then Connie's just like very like slyly tries and plays it off and is like, I don't have a crush on Jason mm-hmm. or like, I don't have a crush on you, despite the fact that like you have all these qualities that would make you a great crush. I'm just not like, you know, if I wanted to have a crush on you, maybe I would, but I have a crush on someone else. Yeah. She says like, I can't have a crush on yeah. you. I have a crush on somebody else. And Jason's yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> now, Andrew, have you ever harbored simultaneous crushes? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. It, as as the resident bisexual at the table, <laughs> uh-huh. it, it's, yeah, it, it's hard for, like, the, 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 the jump from platonic friendship to romance isn't necessarily far. And, like, as somebody that's a hopeful romance. Uh, romantic like I, it's not hard for me to imagine myself in certain situations like that and so like when I'm single or something like that like yeah it, it's easy for me to have a couple female friends that I spend time with or something like that and I might have a little bit of a crush on both of them just because it's like yeah I mean they're cool people I like them and based on crush like what does that even mean yeah, yeah. I, I vaguely like the idea of spending more time with you and maybe kissing you sometimes I mean look you took that question you way more seriously than i thought you would because i was just gonna say yes obviously (laughs) crushes are like exclusive crushes i mean not that it never happens but like it's just funny for kind of be like i can't have a crush on you i've got a crush on someone else and i'm like those things are not mutually exclusive yeah no no they're not um yeah although i will say like if i've really fallen for somebody like if i've got a if i got a crush bad for somebody and like i'm spending time with them and it's just like it can very easily just become monopolized by the one person. sure sure i don't think that's the situation Con- er, connie's in here but, no it doesn't appear to be <laughs> but anyways yeah it, here's here she doesn't i the and the show could never but can we just take a moment and take a step back and go, what if, like, because Connie's not, doesn't actually have a crush on someone else. She has a crush on Jason. She's just yeah. trying to cover her tracks yeah. and stir things up a little bit. Can we just imagine the reality in which, because I fully expected her to say to Jason, I don't have a crush on you, I have a crush on Eugene. But that's not mm. what she says. She just leaves it hanging. Yeah. Can we imagine the reality in which she says, I don't have a crush on you, I have a crush on Katrina? Oh, what a wonderful world that would be. <laughs> I just think it would be it would be so funny and such like an interesting thing for this yeah. show to explore terribly. Yeah. Um because they would. Yeah. But just like it would be so funny and it would be like <laughs> yeah. such a left field uh yeah. yeah maybe maybe if they make that episode today that's what they're doing because they they could rope it into the whole you've created a soap opera for yourself such mm-hmm. a fake reality you even like people of the same gender yep <laughs> yeah yeah oh boy now you've got a new drum to beat i'm i'm team keep keep connie single andrew's gonna become make connie, <laughs> connie Les- yeah make connie a lesbian please <laughs> oh. oh man that would i mean that would be kind of <laughs> iconic <laughs> that would be fantastic oh uh, i don't Kill know why i bring these things up connie marries uh <laughs> katrina after after uh after Eugene Eugene dies. yeah <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> we get a real Will and Grace moment. No, no, stop! This. Oh, they find each other in the darkness, and they both can remember his laugh. This cannot. No. <laughs> oh my word! I hate you. 
<laughs> oh, this is all my fault. Speaking of Eugene's laugh, though, he does a perfect, Such good. a perfect laugh later on that is so in the same vein as a Hal Smith wit laugh. Mm. That really like struck like a sweet note for me. Oh, of like Will Ryan just like kills it with this laugh but like something about the delivery of it feels very like old time radio yeah delivery of a laugh and it just made me think of how yo that's so oh that's sweet i love that for you and i love that for will rest (laughs) in power (laughs) so that is not what happens uh she just kind of leaves it hanging yeah, so Connie, Connie just kind of leaves the crush thing open-ended mm-hmm. with Jason, and then we cut to Eugene, who is attempting to edit tape. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought it was actually, like, Jason was recording with Eugene and was in the room, oh. and then it cuts to, like, Eugene yep. being like, ah, oh, the stupid recording. Yep. It is such a we-make-an-audio-show joke. Yeah, yeah. That I, I mean, I... Complaining about I the love. machine. I love. Oh, yeah. Like, it just, it makes me happy. That, like, right, the tape gets messed up Mm -hmm. in this whole, like, weird subplot we've had going on in these episodes of them trying to record the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. Like, it is just funny to hear, like, yep, we're in this recording booth. There goes the tape. Like, Mm -hmm. and then Jack walks in and is like, you running into problems? And Eugene's like, well, I didn't. Like, it's on the floor. Can't you? Like, I didn't intend for, like, he just, he lashes out at Jack with sarcasm, which is something that I don't know anything about. (laughs) I would happened. never do that. No, no, Dylan's I, never done that. <laughs> and so I did not relate to Eugene at all in this moment. It, yeah. I was just very much like, wow, what a jerk. Yeah. No, I, just the, the lashing out like sarcastically and mm-hmm. then like immediately like realizing it yeah. and apologizing yeah. is like so much of my professional life. <laughs> yeah no i mean like, that's fair though because you know if yeah yeah you you just make a comment and you're like uh i mean i i didn't yeah i i'm sorry for the way that i yeah. communicated i am that. i am letting off steam it's not supposed to be directed towards you even though i just directed it towards you yeah and so if you're someone listening to who i've done that to i am so sorry <laughs> i forgive you Dylan. but uh, <laughs> yeah uh <sighs> But yeah, and Jack and Eugene just have this really nice moment of just like, ah, Jack, like being like a decent mentor and just yeah. kind of being like, hey, like, yeah, Eugene's coming clean about all of these Katrina struggles. And mm-hmm. Jack's just kind of like, look, like go to her, mm-hmm. like have that conversation. Now, Eugene doesn't take the advice in a good direction necessarily, no. but Jack is here just like giving good advice and also being like look like you couldn't have expect like i feel like jack is having the conversation that i so often have with myself or with other people who are going through relationship stuff Mm -hmm. of just being like you understand he's just he's so um yeah uh just kind and considerate and is just like let's let's talk through the facts here Mm -hmm. like you understand that Katrina's not doing this to hurt you. Yeah. You understand that she didn't know you were going to become a Christian. Like, she moved on with her life and needed to. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And Eugene's like, yeah, I do know that. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just like, yeah, it's like a nice... A nice exchange between them. Yeah, no, I really appreciate this this conversation specifically because I think Jack does a great job of holding space for both the the rationality of the decision making made by two human people that he knows and <laughs> cares about and like also the also the 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 very real heartbreak that is uh, you know undergoing and and happening and and all of the anxiety um, you know, obviously, like, the triangle hasn't come out at this point, but you get to <laughs> learn more about Jack's history and, and everything, and I think I, one of the reasons I really like this episode is because Jack is, uh, is a steadying force that is not, uh, oh, I'm, you know, I've been married for 40 years, you'll just figure it out and it'll be fine, you know, or even a wit where I had this perfect marriage and it ended, like, Jack didn't really come didn't come to odyssey with any attachment to anybody else and doesn't get any until he 
um, connects with Joanne. And so, like, having this wise older figure speak to you about life and you can just kind of hear the fact that, like, yeah, no, I mean, he's saying... He's saying reality here. He's speaking truth uh, about the fact that, like, this is just the perspective that I have on it. And both of these things can be true at the same time, even though they seem in conflict with each other. Yeah. Yeah. I it's... I feel the same way about her. His conversation with Katrina later. Or not Katrina. Connie is yep. so good. Yeah. And so, yeah, then we, we cut to uh, Tasha and Jason. Mm-hmm. Um or J- Tasha walks in, Jason's behind the counter. She, d- they have this weird exchange about like, oh, you can have the order however you like it. And yeah. so she like, it feels like a made to order Burger King joke from the nineties. Yeah. It, it's not, it's, it's like the banter that feels least organic out yeah. of everything they've done. I just don't get what it feels like. It feels like McCusker writing banter for the sake of banter. Yeah. Rather than like banter that like, feels real to these characters and advances the story and whatever or feels relevant to what's happening yeah. at the moment like yep. this is just generic like oh i walked into your place of business and made a ridiculous order because yeah joke right yeah it doesn't it doesn't work for me it kind of yeah it's it's annoying it doesn't sound like Tasha, how it doesn't good sound like their Jason. chemistry is yeah it's this weird like forced moment that just doesn't work um but then Tasha's like, you know, like, hey, like, we're gonna, you didn't forget about the picnic. And Jason's like, well, no, but I also didn't expect that you'd want to, seeing as it's like raining. And she's like, sun's out, clouds are gone, yeah. like, it's gonna be great. Um, and Jason's, Jason's like, what about mud? What? And like, this is where their banter gets yeah, good. Yeah. She's like, I'm like, you have, you think I am going to have a problem with mud? Yeah, are you gonna have a problem with mud? Like, yeah. is this an issue for you? No. Yep. Okay, cool. And then they end up sitting in their car, which I think right. is funny. Yeah, while while it rains outside, mm-hmm. and like you can hear the windshield the wipers, wipers, and it's yeah. just very cute. But like, but yeah, before that though, Jason's got to go talk to Connie mm-hmm. um, and Eugene to let them know that he is he's leaving because Jack has already left. Yes, and uh, we have this. Connie barges into the recording studio mm-hmm. while Eugene is recording lines. Mm-hmm. Eugene does the whole thing where he's like, do you not understand what the red light is for? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, that's a really nice red light. Yeah. Which this is the uh, this rekindled mm-hmm. a fury that I had forgotten. Oh, of Stranger Things season three in which like three times, if not more freaking nancy Mm -hmm. that's the yeah 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 the natalia dwyer character bursts into a dark room while her boyfriend is developing developing photos yeah and every time i'm just mad at her i'm just like you are the worst yep you are an animal yep (laughs) there's art at work (laughs) so much and Would so, you spit on Picasso's palette while he's painting? <laughs> and so that's kind of how I feel about the Eugene thing here. But it's also, right, it's just another fun moment. But it sets Eugene off. They yell at each other. Connie's about to storm out. And Eugene's like, wait, no, I do need to apologize. Yeah, like, my life is so crazy. I actually need to, like, make sure this is okay. Which yep. is a real thing. I've mm-hmm. been there. And, like, also, so sweet. It's, I think it's just fantastic that he, he hits that point with Connie. And mm-hmm. Connie's the person that he's like... This is so stupid. Like, at the end of the day, our stupid stuff is going to continue. But, like, I need you here right now. And, like, I need to have somebody on my yeah. on my side right now. Yep. And Connie apologizes and then gives him, like, the sweetest hug. Mm-hmm. And it is... And they just... have, like, great banter back and forth about, like, the nature of the hug and everything. Right, but, like, the hug itself is incredibly well, like... You know it's a hug uh, yeah. before they say it. Yeah. And I don't know how they do that. Probably by hugging in front of a microphone. Yeah, maybe? but like that just know. seems like that shouldn't be able to be portrayed in audio form. Dylan, let's hug right now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear it? And so it's just, it's really remarkable. And then they, they do... McCusker writes it so like we had the hug the last episode Mm -hmm. and they then like Eugene then asks about the nature of the hug Mm -hmm. so it's like it's a nice 
way to be like, if you didn't understand that that's mm-hmm. what just happened, we are now explaining it. Yeah. But just something about their vocal quality, mm-hmm. the, like the performances, the it's way it's kind. engineered, yeah. like it really, you the hug is communicated before he says that, but then yeah. he says it in a way that doesn't feel like, and this line is to explain what, what, what just happened because mm-hmm. you couldn't see it. Yeah. Like it is. Hugs position. <laughs> it is unbelievable how well crafted yeah. this exchange is and then and then they get into the whole nature of the hug and kind of like it's actually more complex than it seems and like goes to demonstrate it and that's when i wrote paused oh. the episode and wrote jason's about to walk in on the two of them hugging i hate everything yeah yeah that's and the fair. door opens and jason sees it and tasha sees it All and they're like again. oh it's not what it seems and jason's like i'm just gonna leave and they're like no no we can explain he's like you don't need to explain we're gonna leave and tasha's like i kind of like you uh, yeah explain. tasha wants an explanation <laughs> <laughs> love that for her but uh, but maybe yeah. tasha's then, the gay one and then uh, and then the <laughs> eggs <laughs> oh we like tasha and jason that's fair um they exit the scene though and (laughs) or they exit the room and then connie just starts laughing and is like is like i previously told jason that i had a crush on someone else now he's gonna think it's you Mm -hmm. this is so funny (laughs) yeah no it's uh yeah i love that she has that perspective on it at this point oh yeah well and I don't know. Just like, like last episode, I think her feelings were genuinely hurt. This episode, yeah. she's in it for the drama. Yeah, no, she's in it for the drama, and that gets addressed at the end. And I think that she also recognizes the humor in the situation of like, oh, yes. we've literally just been. Yeah. Here. Oh like, yeah, this is ridiculous. This has happened twice, and yes, and it it's is. caught on recording, which is hilarious because that's right. how Jack finds out later. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but but before that, so we have jason and tasha we have jason and tasha arguing yeah Yeah. and because tasha mentions that like they're you know sitting out talking about the future and tasha mentions that she's got to go back to Mm -hmm. work back to dc and jason Jason loses his mind (laughs) wait what i thought that this was everything like i didn't think that you were gonna do this i didn't put a knot ring on your finger so you could sleep in some other man's bed honey he just he gets so weird and protective and it's clear that like jason has like projected an expectation onto this relationship that like tasha's in yeah but like she's not going to give up her life well and if she just is, in a not, second yeah it's not gonna look like for this and so jason is just fully unreasonable in mm-hmm. this moment in a way that's really annoying and he doesn't really walk and he, like, that back triples down yeah yeah it's so frustrating because at the end of it he's like tasha i really don't want you to do this and like right. that's the line they end on like yeah he's the right person in this situation and it just feels like it just it also feels like we wouldn't be having this conversation if the roles were flipped yeah or if the like if if Jason was a woman and Tasha was a man and mm-hmm. Tasha was doing this, yeah. then like it would be obvious that he was that Tasha would be the right one. Mm-hmm. But because it's the other way around, it's like Jason set up to be the right one. And yeah. I don't know that he ultimately is, but just kind of that feeling of like he's justified for feeling like overprotective and like pulling I don't this person want you back. To go back, and I'm like, <sighs> right. Right. Whereas, what? like, right, if you view this as, like, a man leaving for war and his girlfriend being like, no, no, you can't go, and him being mm-hmm. like, I must, it's my duty. Yeah. Then, like, everyone sides with the man in that. Yeah, exactly. And, like, like, that's, like, that's the trope. Yeah. And they're, like, flipping that, but it's but it's this weird, like, Jason being, like, overprotective of Tasha, who has, like, saved his life. <laughs> right. Like, she is the better spy of the two of them. That's always yeah. been, like... I feel like that's always been the case. Or at least when they're around each other, I yeah. think uh, I think maybe Jason gets worse and Tasha gets better. Sure. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But it's just, so yeah, it's this like annoying, oh, like it comes across as overprotection in a way mm-hmm. that I don't love. But I, I get it. Like he's, he's left that life 
he thinks that this is the next thing. And he also, right, they were so on the same page last episode Mm -hmm. that they didn't bother to have any clarifying conversation. And so I think he's really thrown by the fact that they're not actually on the same page. Like, I think that has been a, yeah, just wound up being a surprise to Jason in this moment. Yeah, no, it's... (sighs) It is a very strange tone that that Jason takes in this, and yeah, I don't know. I I like that he kind of comes back around to it by the end of it. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's kind of shown. It for works what by it the is. end of the episode. And it's like, very caricature-y. Yeah. Yes, but it's just it's not. Yeah. And then it's we cut to Eugene and Katrina wanna... having lunch. Right. The meat and potatoes. Why we're really here? Yep. Is this scene, and it's uh-huh. great. It's fantastic. Dylan, please tell me about what happens. <laughs> it's great. It's fantastic. I don't know the way that it's written. I, I like don't it. like this scene. You don't? I, I I think I get too much like secondhand embarrassment. Maybe I oh, don't for know. Eugene? I I think Eugene's way out of line. Yeah. Like, I mean, he so is. what happens is like they're talking, and Eugene just decides to like lay it all out, like Jack said. But rather than doing it in like a kind and considerate and like yeah. mellow way, he winds up like yelling all yeah. of this stuff at Katrina and just yeah. being like, "Why are you abandoning me?" Mm-hmm. In no, a way not that cool. I didn't. No, it's enjoy, not good. But I but, just think I think it's great the way that it's written and the vocal performance from will ryan the way mm. that like his emotions slowly get away from him as it's sure. delivering sure it's like, fun to see a calm collected guy blow up yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> why i love this scene no right no. i'm just like yeah. as the person as the who, calm collected guy well, as, <laughs> right as the person who identifies so hardly like so strongly with eugene through all of this i'm just like Oh man, that is not how you play this moment. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's really really tough, and the way that he breaks up Brandon and all of that. Yeah, like, right. He, he does it. Her. He talks about this like rivalry, and he's like this he's Brandon. Like, <laughs> right. He like he sneers the name, and then he also is like this guy who is like a better con- cr- like obviously yeah. a better Christian. He's everything that I am not. Like, how am I supposed to compete with him? And I'm like, dude, you're not. Do not make a, co- like, don't have a competition. Competition for love is, like, one of the oldest tropes of what not to do right. when in love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so it's just, like, it is, and maybe that's the point of this episode, is we've got two back-to-back scenes mm-hmm. of the men being in the wrong. Yeah. And being competitive. I don't know that it fully lands the plane on that, but, like. It certainly launches it. Right. Nice. <laughs> it's in the air. Um. <laughs> And Ugh. yeah. Anyways, we then um we then have the conversation between Connie and Jack, where Jack is listening to the recording because the, yep. the the scene begins hearing Eugene's voice again, which again threw me off. Uh-huh. I was like, "Is this going to be a situation? Andrew? Maybe that's what the promo is doing." <laughs> <laughs> but I was right. I listened to this episode and went. Shoot, is my audio file corrupt? Yeah. Like, did I accidentally, like, did the record, like, did the episode jump back in time? Did I bump the, like, you know, go back five minutes button? The record within the record really got me. (laughs) Well, hearing a scene that we already heard Mm -hmm. is weird. Yeah. And But it's Jack listening, and he, yeah, they have this conversation then with Mm -hmm. Connie where he's just like, look... I think you've created some of this drama in your life to avoid boredom is basically like what it comes down to. And he, he does a really kind walk up to it. He's not coming at her by any means. And I think that that's the thing that I love the most about Jack is that like, even when he's like basically calling out, you know, people that are younger than him, like it does not sound like he has any sort of judgment or animosity in his voice. Yeah. Um, even though he is like kind of giving some hard truth here and, and honest, all honesty, like not entirely justified. Connie might be distracting herself with problems and other people's lives, but she's also like a child and very much intertwined with everything that's happening at Wits Yeah. End. Yeah. And like, I, if you think about this, like a high schooler whose yep. family is having all kinds of crazy stuff happen to it, like, yep, it makes a lot more sense. I don't. Yeah, I don't know that I can get on board with Jack coming down so hard on Connie for, like, creating drama. Because she didn't create anything. I Yeah, I don't think that that is what 
she oh yeah i decided to have a crush here. so i wouldn't be bored yeah that's not how that happens yeah i mean maybe you can be bored with life in general and then you're looking for something and you find a crush great awesome yeah uh but it's not like uh i'm bored on a thursday afternoon let me go just get a crush so i have something to do <laughs> yeah yeah and it's it's the weird incongruity between like that is kind of connie like being all into the drama is kind of her plot line in this episode but is not her thing last episode at all mm -hmm. and so it's a weird thing to kind of couple the two together because it is a two-parter and be yeah. like the whole thing you've been going through these last two episodes is that your life's boring <laughs> and these people's are exciting and so you're trying to like drum up drama yeah. and i'm like i don't think that's what she's doing no i, don't think I it also is think that jack and or that Eugene and Jason both were just way more dramatic mm -hmm. in their previous scenes than Connie is being in this one. Oh, yeah. But of course, because she's the woman, we've got to be like, man, Connie's drama. <sighs> and this whole episode, I feel like, because Katrina really gets like flattened, like we don't mm. get anything from Katrina's perspective yeah. in this episode. We don't, we, Tasha gets a little bit more agency, which I appreciate. And then, Right, Connie's whole plot line is that she's bad because she's stirring up drama. And so I don't, yeah, I yeah. don't love uh, a lot of the writing in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, no, no, I, I, I do agree because I think that Connie is is valid in in that, um, in, in her desire for, like, in her experience of her crush on Jason and for for her involvement with the situation because at the very least she's very close with eugene and very close with jason and so like yeah. there's like yeah you would want to be involved to a certain extent whether you know you need to be involved in every decision that's being made and every uh you know being involved in all of the thought process that's going into it is yeah is different but yeah yeah it's difficult and yeah. then uh then we we go to like the, the, this is like I don't know. Th this is where the episode really sings mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. This is the them leaning into the, like the sitcom soap opera yeah. like to the nth degree, and it just working. Eugene and Jason wistfully yep. watching the sun go down, commiserating yep. about their feminine problems, <sighs> and uh, it's uh, it's very funny. Like the chiming in, like Eugene bouncing off of jason jason bouncing off of eugene they're such different people but in this moment like it sounds like they're the same guy and then jack comes up and is like you sorry bunch of lots <laughs> right right well the thing is right neither of them like are sure like they're both leaving katrina and tasha are both leaving mm -hmm. and neither eugene or jason like kind of know where they stand like they yeah. don't quite they've both like lost confidence in where things are headed and whatnot um and yeah it's just weird and jack's like look just like come on guys like cheer mm -hmm. up stop moping around whatever and they're like you know what we should go do like we should put a stop to this like they race to the airport yeah um second time eugene's race to the airport <laughs> in, in, in very oh. yeah i mean in our coverage of this arc yeah um and yeah, and they decide to, like, they, there's two corridors at mm -hmm. Odyssey Airport, I guess. Yeah. Um, and they decide to split up and each take one. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know immediately what's about to happen. They run into the wrong beautiful. person. And it's great. And yep. they have the conversation. And they're like, yeah. oh, let me just Jason... speak for the person that's supposed to be here. Right. So first, Jason finds Katrina. And Jason's like... Can you you gotta come with me to go find Eugene? And he's like, she's like, my plane is boarding now. Like they just made the last call. I can't do that. And Jason's like, all right, well, um, I, I think I can sum up basically what he's trying to say. And yeah, it kind of goes through this whole thing about talking about um yeah, Eugene's just in this place of trying mm -hmm. to figure out like his feelings towards you, God's will, yeah. how to like you know navigate these things. You know, he loves you. He wants you, the but best he for both of us, right? But yeah. he wants, yeah, he loves you, but he wants what's best ultimately. And Katrina's basically like, okay, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Like I, and then Jason's like, do you love her? Him. Um, him. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, uh, <Connie. laughs> 
And um, Katrina replies, yes. And, yep. and hearing those words coming out of her mouth were really sweet and beautiful and yep. uh, made me smile. Yep. And so, yeah, they have that moment. And the idea that, like, Eugene is so caught up in his emotions that he has not been able to communicate this well. Yeah. And had he found Katrina, I don't think that this time would have fared any better than no. the last two or three no. that we experienced over these episodes. But because it's Jason, mm-hmm. like there's not the the emotion isn't as raw. Yeah, you can be and, understood and have your feelings communicated for um and like advocated for without having the personal the weight of the personal experience of yeah. communicating it yep where it's like you don't have the anxiety of saying it it's just like writing a letter and dropping it off through somebody else yep meanwhile jason or sorry meanwhile eugene has found tasha um mm-hmm. and they just have this really great exchange and tasha's like yeah of course i like no this doesn't change anything we're still yeah, engaged yeah. like yeah it's great i just don't have a She's like, I don't have a ring to prove it, but like, mm-hmm. we're good. And Eugene's like, oh, we didn't set that up. But Eugene bought a ring for mm-hmm. Katrina that wasn't an engagement ring. It was just a ring. Yep. Weird gift. I don't know that I would ever do Don't that. do it. I, I have somebody that like, has bought rings for significant others. Um, it's just a dicey situation yeah. for meaning and such yep. and, and weight and symbolism. Correct. That carries so much weight. Yeah, just that go with is, a necklace. Yeah, exactly. There's so many jewelry, so much jewelry that aren't rings. Earrings. Yeah, they still have rings in there. Yeah, you can get her an anklet. Beautiful. Nothing says romance like an anklet. What? What about a little like a fresh set of nipple piercing studs? Uh huh. I saw that joke coming from a mile away, and I'm not amused. It was it just the. So was it the no, I mean, it, it was before you even motioned, I was just like, oh, Andrew, you paused long enough that I'm like, he's deciding whether or not he wants to go like, you know. yeah. Anyway, so Eugene has this ring and he decides to give it to mm-hmm. Tasha yeah. in Jason's stead. And is like, hopefully it fits, but mm-hmm. like, this will do it. And, and Tasha's, it's really sweet. Yeah. Tasha's just like, oh, I can't do that. And he's like, no, come on. Come on like, now. We'll, we'll, we'll for sure do it. And yeah. Um, and she gives him she gives him a kiss on the cheek. Yeah, and you and can hear to, it. And yep. like you can hear he's like flustered afterwards. Yep. Oh yeah. He's not a man who gets kissed often. <sighs> and he's like he's like, you know, I gotta he's like, I'll probably let you relay that message. Yeah. Um which this is so cute. Yeah. And, and then, also Eugene and Jason. You Jason. <laughs> great. <laughs> Lovely. And then they get back. J. Jean? No. Um, They get back together. Uh, Jason and Eugene find each other and they fill each other in. And Jason points out that there's still some lipstick on Eugene's cheek. And that Connie's going to be jealous. Yep. And Eugene (laughs) just starts laughing, which is where we get that really wit-esque laugh that I love. Hal Smith-esque laugh. Um, And that's, that's the episode. Well, that's right after the uh, the love is in the air bit when oh, they fly right, off. Right, <laughs> correct, correct. Eugene, J- Jason uh. stares down the barrel of the camera and says like, ah, it really has been a love in the air. Yep. Uh, no, my, my favorite bit from the last scene is Eugene says, think nothing of it for now about the ring that he gave to Jason uh-huh. or gave to Tasha. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's just cute and... Yeah. A little head nod to the fact that he might need that ring back, or <laughs> might might have future use for it in the future. In future use in the future. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know it. And that's that's the dang episode, that's guys. The dang episode. I don't don't have much more to say there, Part except that uh, two and all. Yeah, that that's it. Um. So thanks for coming along on that ride with us. How could you do this to me, Dylan? <laughs> what? This no, it was a quote from Eugene. Ah, That's what he ah, screams. Good, good. Well, well done. You're so much smarter than me. No, I just wrote it in all caps, so it was really easy to bre- uh, to read. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Um, I don't <sighs> anything to plug. I don't think I've got anything to plug. I yeah. Oh, uh, here, here. This is my one, my one closing thought, Andrew. Mm. Is uh, next time either of us is dealing with relationship drama, we'll just do the swap. 
Oh yeah, for solve sure. it all. Yeah, you tell me what you're trying to say, and I'll communicate it to yep. your yep. significant other, and you and can then do the same vice for versa. me. And yeah, great, we'll be great golden. strategy. So mm-hmm. we uh, we will begin the scientific study on this strategy now. Okay. It will be done and be applicable for uh, use in scientific fields in 20 years. Okay. So yep, I like it. A lot of testing to be done. Lots of dates to be had. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Um, with all that being said, uh, we are off next week. I will be on a much-needed vacation that I am really looking forward to. And so, uh, yeah, I am sorry, uh, folks. Andrew teased that maybe he'll do something, but I don't want to assume that. No, um, no, 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 because I got a great idea for <laughs> for Katrina Connie fanfic. No, I <laughs> That's what you're going to do? Yeah! <laughs> Morning over Eugene's death. I think it'll no. be great. Oh, my word. All right. I have no control over the feed for next <laughs> week. So if something pops up on there, um, oh. the views of Andrew Sabu do not reflect that of <laughs> Dylan Weaver or the Wad Fam Chalk Pod. Don't worry. But, I won't um, leave the stove on. <laughs> but I'll let you, yeah, do some, yeah, crazy some entertainment. Do cooking? Yep. Oh, man. Um, but the episode that we will be back in two weeks to talk about is episode 355 the search for wit part one holy oh my uh-huh bye guys bye